Hey guys, ECRG here, back with another episode. As you can see from the title of this episode, we had a listener email in and say, basically, they're interested in clinical research and entry-level clinical research, but they are hesitant about getting in clinical research. So I'm going to read their email here. Before I do, I just want to let you guys know about the resume review program we've got going on. Now is a great time to email in. And I'm getting a lot of bookings lately for career consultation. So there's also that too. If you want me to look at your background, or well, actually we'll set up a time to talk, um, 30 minutes or an hour. And I'll look at your situation and we'll come up with a plan to get you in the clinical research field or a plan for you to get to the next level. Some things to do, some tricks and tips um, that are going to be specific to your experience, your location, and what you're trying to do in clinical research. So a lot of people uh, have been emailing in, obviously, and rightfully so. I tell you guys to do that. But if you really want more in-depth personal feedback um, that is going to be more nuanced than just emailing back and forth, um, I would strongly recommend that you uh, schedule a time for career consultation. And you're really just paying for my time. Um, so that's what that is. And you can ask any questions you want about clinical research. So I strongly recommend that. So if you're interested in that, email me eliteclinicalgroup at gmail.com. So let's go ahead and get into this topic. So this person emails in, thank you for your candid, straightforward, candid and straightforward feedback you provide. About me, I live in Dallas, Texas and attained a master's in cognition and neuroscience from UT Dallas a few years ago. My main interest is to enhance the knowledge base informing traumatic brain injury research into, its, into care and rehabilitation. It's a debilitating clinical entity that is devastatingly and negatively affecting billions, cumulatively over time and also the family, um, who suffer from its existence among those so affected. Okay, so I think I know where this is going already. Um, so the main question they have is, I feel like I'd like to promote the innovations and beneficial impacts of emergency medicine and clinical research if possible, but not really sure the way. I presume that prerequisites would be graduate education and certification as Minimally Clinical Research Associate. Do you know if that's the case? So to answer your first question, no, you do not need graduate, any type of graduate um, experience or graduate degree really to get into clinical research. Unless you're trying to be a PI, principal investigator or sub-investigator, or trying to make the drugs themselves or something like that. Those are the only positions or like pharmacovigilance, some, some pharmacovigilance. Um, they have fellowships in the pharmace pharmaceutical department but if you're really trying to be involved in the making of the drug or designing the drug or the science behind it or being a principal investigator, those are the only ones where you need an advanced degree like a doctorate or something along those lines. Um, if you're just trying to get to master's level, I recommend you get into the field first because a lot of companies will pay for your master's degree or pay for some of your master's degree. So I strongly recommend that than going into debt and paying it yourself. Um, I recommend you get into a company first get a few years of experience, and then have them pay for your graduate degree. That's the best way to go about it. Um, I don't believe in going into debt for something that someone else will pay for. Um, next part, I've, I've seen an entry-level CRA position at MedPace in Dallas. And OG followers, if you've been following for a long time, you already know how I feel about the entry-level position at MedPace and how I feel about MedPace. Um, so they go on to say, I'm hesitant about putting in the application, understanding from what I've read in reviews that they have a non-compete. I'm willing to be underpaid for the purpose of being trained to do a job that would theoretically offer higher pay, value adding potential later, later on. And I'm also willing to move almost anywhere for this purpose. A non-compete though, if it's based on avoiding similar companies for a time or a specific time of work, gives me great pause. How might I become a CRA without having to sign a non-compete? Or are there alternate routes to accomplish the goal that you know of? I've had an interview for a project, a clinical research project coordinator at MedPace that was unsuccessful. Not sure why. And I've not seen CTA openings. Um, so they have more questions. So I'll answer this first and then move on to the next questions. Um, how to be an entry level CRA without a non compete. So what MedPace is doing is they're basically running a game here um, from what I've read. And without getting too much into detail, basically what they're doing is they're having entry-level CRAs come in, um, they're hiring these people with no experience, and the trade-off is you're going to be underpaid. They want you to sign a non-compete so that you don't leave for the time being, 
Um, and basically they're kicking off this more senior members um, because they want to be paid more. Obviously, they're underpaid. They want to be paid more. They're kicking them off um, and hiring these young people. And MedPage is one of the few programs that does have entry-level CRAs, but they get you with that non-compete. Um, they're basically saying, and you know, it's, you know, it, it, it go back and forth on this because, you know, they're bringing you in, they're training you for a, a, a high income job, um, that not a lot of other people are doing, but they don't want you to just take the training for a few months and then leave and go make more money. So that's why they have the non-compete. Um, but you know, I don't really like it in the certain sense that, you know, I've heard negative things about working there in general. Um, if you want to hear more, go look at my Glassdoor review on MedPace. I'm not really going to delve in too deep about them here. But, you know, it's worth a shot. It's worth an application. Um, the thing about the non-compete is you can't work on in similar um, clinical trials for a specific time. Um, so, I mean, th- I've heard that they're not really going to enforce it that much. It's very hard to enforce because you're not going to have trade secrets as a CRA. If you are working as a pharmacist, or you were creating the drug, creating the actual IP of a pharmaceutical company, then that's more um, then that's more applicable from what I've read. Um, it's hard when you're a CRO. MedPace is just a CRO. They're not a pharmaceutical company. So I don't know why, how they can even enforce this non-compete. Um, but it's definitely something of cause to pause. And um, you may, I mean, if you were to leave, you may want to consult an attorney on what they can enforce. I have not heard, and you can do more research on this, about what's enforceable there. Um, Because that's another thing. It's got to be enforceable. So a lot of times they put these non-competes up there just to scare people and say, if you leave, um, we will come after you. Um, So, I mean, everything is worth a shot. It's worth an application. The worst thing you can say if they offer you the job is no. Um, So how how to become a CRA Without signing a non-compete, the best way, in my opinion, is get a job entry level, start from the bottom, and work your way up to it. Um, you know, there are these programs out there, MedPace one of them. They do have a couple others out there that, you know, come up from time to time where they want people without any experience, you know, straight from college, um, et cetera. And you just got to be on the lookout. Timing is everything. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're on the lookout for these positions. Um, but don't let them stop you. Don't get too excited because they're very, very rare to accept someone with zero experience. Um, and then you also mentioned that you did not get the uh, position for project coordinator there. Sorry to hear that. Um, but you got to keep applying. Don't give up. Keep applying, keep applying, keep applying. And, you know, that's pretty much what you got to do. Keep applying, keep applying. Now, if you've applied to a lot of jobs and nothing is happening, you don't see any traction then there might be something with your um, resume. There might be a problem with your resume. Um, And if you're getting a lot of interviews and you're not getting jobs because of the interviews, maybe you need to work on your interviewing skills, both of which we can help with here at Elite Clinical Research. So you just got to keep trying and adjust as needed. Um, And then if you're not seeing openings right now, I mean, you got to remember, COVID is happening right now. So a lot of companies are losing money because, um, you know, for whatever reason, they're losing money and they're not really trying to hire right now. A lot of companies are not hiring. So you cannot think that um, this is the normal job market. It's not the normal job market. It's harder than ever to get a job in clinical research right now just because of coronavirus. A lot of people don't know what's going on. But what I can tell you is there's a lot of pent up demand. Once things get back rolling again, there's going to be so many studies. I know plenty of pharmaceutical companies are having multiple studies come up just on COVID and vaccines. So there is so much work just on the coronavirus front. And whether those jobs are going to become available now or a month from now, they're coming. So trust me, jobs are coming. The second part they ask is separately. Do you know if there's a career path to researching and developing technologies that individuals use to enhance their learning communication capabilities? Or even like a CRA position that focuses on the evaluation of their efficacy with users of the targeted populations? Or even that there, or even that then an either researches and develops means of improving these tools or reports to an R&D team that does so? 
Such a role would be extremely beneficial to the TBI learning disorders population. Um, I'm not even sure quite honestly what you're asking. Developing learning technologies and communication capabilities, that sounds like some Elon Musk type stuff, Neuralink type stuff. And, you know, obviously Neuralink, they're going to have to do clinical trials on if they want that stuff implemented in humans and to be used for um, different types of memory conditions and things of that nature. They're going to have to do clinical trials. So, yes, there are capabil positions like that. But as far as I'm concerned, if you have no clinical research experience, your first goal is to get experience. you got to get some experience first because then you have skills that are actually marketable. So it sounds like you have a good neuro background, and obviously that's something to put on your resume. I'm sure you have a little bit of research experience since it seems like you know a lot about that. But you just want to get some clinical research experience on your resume, whether it's neuro or whatever, cardio, whatever it's going to be. Just get some experience, and then you can always find your way like a fish upstream. Find your way to where you got to be. If you want to be in neuro eventually, do the other studies for a year or two and get some experience, and then you can move to a neuro area. Um, I would not be super picky rejecting jobs just because you want a neuro job. Um, you know, these... <laughs> If you think you've applied to a lot of jobs, think about the other people that have applied. You know, I, I coach clients to a, shoot for 200 jobs, shoot for about 200 jobs just to get in the, the field, just to get in clinical research. So if I'm, if I'm telling you to shoot for 200, that means other people are applying like crazy too. So if you're rejecting jobs because it's not, you know, what, what exactly you want to study, there's 100 people behind you that will gladly accept that job. So I don't recommend being... Um, so picky in the beginning when you're just trying to get experience because it's competitive out there. So obviously you talk about your experience in neuro. You talk about you know what you can bring to the table from the neuro perspective, but you want to talk about you being open to learning about other things and other and other um, other type of conditions also, and wanting to contribute in that regard also. So that's my recommendation. Thank you for your question. Thanks for emailing in. That was a big question. Um, and hopefully that was helpful for you. And I actually told you um, that, you know, you asked a lot of questions. I'm not going to, email you know, go back and forth through email like that. It's better if I just make a complete episode dedicated to your question. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, but keep applying. Don't let the don't let the fact that you didn't get the job at MedPace deter you. Um, a lot of people don't get jobs. That It means you're close, actually, that you had an interview. So just keep applying. More jobs will become available. And eventually you'll find your way into the clinical research field. So take care, guys. Hope this was helpful.